Hello, friends, and welcome to this week's edition of Tell Me a Story. My name is Miss Katie, and today we're going to be talking about colors. We see colors all around us in the outdoors, inside our houses, and in books. Here's our first story coming up next. Welcome to the story of Color Zoo by Lois Ellert. This is a very special story for me because it's the first book I ever remember being read to in a library. When I was in kindergarten, my school librarian, Mr. Dedlick, read this to us, and it really stuck in my brain. I hope it does with you, too. The story begins with shapes and colors in your zoo. Lots of things that you can do. Heads and ears, beaks and snouts. That's what animals are all about. I know animals, and you do too. Let's make some new ones for your zoo. We're gonna start with this animal here. Let's take a look. We've got lots of colors here. There's blue and purple, green and red, kind of a gold. What animal do you think that is? If you guessed a tiger, you're right. Yeah, so we've got the whiskers and the ears. Now the cool thing about this story is when we peel away a layer, we see a shape. It's a circle. And there's a new animal for us to guess with lots more colors. Who's there? Well, it looks like we got him some pink up here. It's an animal that goes squeak, 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 squeak. If you guessed a mouse, you're right. Let's see what shape the mouse gives us. It's a square. Great job, friends. Who is our next animal? This one has only three colors. I think this animal is really smart. We might even say they're cunning or sly. If you guessed a fox, you're right. And the bottom of the fox is a triangle. Excellent. In the book, the pages are cut. So there are holes in the pages, just like there are holes on the felt board shape. All right, we have another set of animals. There they are. Let's see how many colors are on this set of animals. We've got coral and purple, green, orange, blue, pink. That's so many. That is six colors, friends. Let's count them all together. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Excellent. Let's see. This is kind of a harder animal to talk about because it's not one that we see very often. It might look a little bit like a cow, but there are these horns up here that make it an ox. Let's see what shape the ox shows us when we take them away. It's a rectangle, four sides, just like the square, but this one has two long sides and two short sides. Who did the ox bring up on the board? This is an animal that makes some very funny sounds. They go like, ooh, 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 ah, wah, wah. You might have seen them monkeying around because they are a monkey. Let's see what shape the monkey will show us. Wow, that looks like a circle, Miss Katie, but it's a little different. It's an oval. Its sides are not all the way around. It has kind of a longer stretched out feel to it. And our ox 
And our monkey gave way to show us a... What kind of animal do you think that is? They have antlers. And this one has a bright red nose. Hmm. It's a reindeer. And the shape at the very bottom is a heart all the way around. We have one less set of animals and colors to talk about today. This one's going to go right up here on the board. Yep. So, how many colors are in this animal? Well, there's the green background and the orange circle. There's a red in the middle with a pink nose, two blue eyes. So that looks like one, two, three, four, five. Five colors this time. And this animal has a great sound clue. It goes roar. They have a big fluffy mane of hair. It's a lion. Let's see what the lion will show us with a shape. They're going to show us a diamond. I love diamonds, not because of the jewelry, but because of baseball. We play on a baseball diamond. There's our new animal. This animal has some horns and ears, and a little scruffy goat. Yes, it is a goat. Let's see what shape the goat will show us today. This is a great shape. This is a shape that has eight sides, so it's called an octagon. Oc Ac means eight. That's why octopus has the same starting sound to that word. Oh, our last animal today. This is an animal that gives me a little bit of a fright, but I'm still glad to have them here in our color zoo. They have a red body, blue eyes, a pink nose, and a purple tongue. They are a snake. And the bottom part of our snake is a hexagon with six sides. Just like octagon, ac means eight, hexagon, hex means six. I hope you enjoyed this story and stay tuned for more color fun. Are you ready for a song? I think we need a song break. We are going to be doing a song that many of you already know because it's a familiar nursery rhyme tune. It has this animal. Ma or ba. And can you tell me what color that sheep is? It's a black sheep. We're going to sing some ba ba black sheep together. Here we go. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the farmer and one for the dame and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Now, that's a pretty short song, but we can make it longer by changing the color of our sheep. What color is this sheep? red. So, ba ba red sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the farmer and one for the dame, and one for the little girl that lives down the lane. Ba ba red sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Let's see if I have another sheep. I do. Ba ba blue sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the farmer and one for the dame, and one for the little dog who lives down the lane. Ba ba blue sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. 
I have one more sheep to share with you. It's green. Bye bye green sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for the farmer and one for the dame. And one for the little cat who lives down the lane. Bye bye green sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. So hopefully you learned how to extend a normal song that we sang, like something like Baba Black Sheep where we can change the color. This works with a lot of nursery rhymes. You can change Mary had a little lamb to Mary had a little dog, and you can keep practicing animals. I also wanted to talk a little bit about how nursery rhymes are basically taught orally. So sometimes you know different words than I do, and that's okay. Also, you don't have to always sing the same things. I sang one for the farmer and one for the dame, and then I changed who lives down that lane. We had a boy, a girl, a dog, and a cat that were in our song today. Here comes our next story. This is the story of Mouse Paint by Ellen Walsh. This book talks all about how we make colors. There are three colors, red, yellow, and blue, that are primary colors. And all the other colors, orange, purple, and green, are mixed and made from red, yellow, and blue. Let's see how this story plays out here on the flannel board. Once, there were three white mice on a white piece of paper. Can you see all those mice? One, two, three. It's hard to see when there's white on white. And you know who couldn't see them? The cat. It's not seeing the mice anywhere. Where could they be? One day, while the cat was asleep, the mice saw three jars of paint. Did that remember? We talked about the blue and the yellow and the red. And those are the primary colors. They thought the paint was mouse paint and they climbed right in. Can you help me climb in? Climb, 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 climb. The, put them in. Bloop, whoosh. <gasps> what happened? Did that mouse turn? It did, it turned red. Oh my goodness. Climb, 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 climb. And that mouse turned yellow. Last mouse, climb, 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 climb. And that mouse turned blue. So now one mouse was red. One mouse was yellow, and one mouse was blue. I hope the cat stays asleep. The mice stripped puddles of paint on the paper. See that? Three puddles for three mice? And they thought the puddles looked like fun. So, the red mouse stepped into the yellow puddle. And that mouse started to dance around. Can you do a little dance? Maybe your dance looks like this. There are lots of ways to dance. You dance how it's fun for you to go. As the mouse was dancing, the puddle turned orange. Look, he cried, red feet in a yellow puddle make orange. And this mouse went back and he had orange feet now. The yellow mouse hopped into the blue puddle. Do you think they did a dance? They did. They danced around. His feet stirred and mixed until, look! Yellow feet in a blue puddle make green. 
and when that mouse jumped back, she had green feet. What do you think will happen next, my friends? Yes, I think you're right. I think the blue mouse jumped into the red puddle and they splashed and mixed and danced until, look, blue feet in a red puddle make purple. And when this mouse came back, their feet were purple. Oh no, though, the paint on their fur was sticky and stiff. So they found the cat's bowl and they washed themselves off. And look, that mouse is back to being white. They washed themselves off. Mouse is back to being white. And they washed themselves off. And that mouse is back to being white. But they still loved all of the colors that they had made that day. So they took a paintbrush and they painted parts of the paper different colors. They made sure to paint the paper with some red and with some green and with some blue and orange and yellow and purple. And they left some part white though so the cat still couldn't find him. The end. What a fantastic way to explore how to make colors. I really thought the mice were a great job using detective and scientist skills as they tried something to find out what happened. Stay tuned for more color fun coming up next. Let's get moving. This rhyme is called, If You're Wearing Red Today, and it's a rhyme all about the colors that we're wearing. So make sure to take a look down at what you're wearing today so that you know when it's your turn to participate. This rhyme involves standing up, turning around, taking a bow, and then sitting back down. So let's practice those motions. Stand up, turn around, take a bow and sit back down on the ground. One more time. Stand up, turn around, take a bow, and sit down on the ground. Excellent. You're going to watch for some of the wrist ribbons that I have to let you know what color's turn it is. Ooh. If you're wearing red today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. If you're wearing ta -da, blue today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. If you're wearing green, Today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. Next, if you're wearing purple today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. If you're wearing yellow today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. If you're wearing orange today, stand up, turn around, take a bow, then sit back down on the ground. If you're wearing rainbow colors, any color, stand up, turn around, 
take a bow, then sit back down on the ground for our next story. Are you ready for another story? Great, me too. This is the story of Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. This book was written by Eric Litwin and illustrated by James Dean. Pete is already up here on the flannel board wearing his favorite yellow shirt. It had four big, colorful, round buttons. Let's talk about the colors of the buttons. There's a light blue and a dark blue and a green and a red, all on Pete's yellow shirts. Now, Pete loved his buttons so much that he sang a song about them. It goes a little something like this. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. When all of a sudden, I have the light blue button here in my hand because it popped off and it rolled away. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He just kept singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. When all of a sudden, pop! It's the dark blue button this time, friends. It popped off and it rolled away. How many buttons are left? One, two, two buttons are left. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept singing his song. Number two now. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. When all of a sudden, The green button came off and it rolled away. How many buttons are left? One. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He just kept singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button, my button, my button, my one groovy button. When all of a sudden, pop! The red button came off and it rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt, which had opened up a little. And what do you think he saw? Right there, right here on me. His belly button. So he kept singing on his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. The moral of the story is things come and things go, but we can always keep on singing. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. I really liked that one. Here's a tip for our parents. If you are ever having a moment where your kiddo is not feeling so good or so confident, maybe they're having a moment where they need to take a break. Songs are a great way to calm down our emotions, just like Pete used in this story. There's still a little bit more fun to come, so stay tuned.
we've had a lot of cats in our story time today, haven't we? We had the cat and mouse paint, and we had Pete the cat, and we're going to end on one more cat. This is my friend Scat. Can you say hi to Scat? Hi, Scat. Scat has a magic word that they like to use. It's abracadabra. Can you say that with me? Abracadabra. We're going to see if Scat can show us a special trick when we say their magic word. Scat the cat is sassy and fat, and they can change their colors just like that. Say the magic word. Abracadabra. <gasps> Scat used to be black. What color is Scat now? You're right. Scat is red, the color of apples and strawberries and stop signs. Do you think Scat can do the trick again? Let's try their rhyme. Scat the cat is sassy and fat, and they can change their colors just like that. Abracadabra. <gasps> Scat used to be red, and now Scat is yellow, like the color of the sun, and a banana. Great. I think Scat might have a few more tricks up their sleeves. Let's try. Scat the cat is sassy and fat, and they can change their colors just like that. Abracadabra! <gasps> wow! Scat is now blue, like the ocean and the sky and like I don't know about you, but I think Scat still has another trick. Scat the cat is sassy and fat, and they can change their colors just like that. Abracadabra! Whoosh. Scat is green, the color of the grass and of some cucumbers tree leaves. Well, tree leaves in the summertime. Look at that. Scat doesn't like to stay one of the normal colors, though. Scat likes to go back to when they were their first color. Who remembers? Scat was green and blue, yellow, and red. But the very first color that Scat was, was black. Let's help them go all the way back. Scat the cat is sassy and fat, and they can change their colors just like that. Abracadabra! <sighs> Great job, Scat. Thank you so much for being here today, friends. I hope you had as much fun as I did reading, learning, talking, and singing about colors. We'll be back here the same time, same place next week on Monday mornings at 1030 a.m. for the next week of Tell Me a Story. See you then. Bye.